Princess Lily here with another Trans Girl CNC where we talk about comics, cartoons, and other awesome nerd shit. So, this week, as mentioned, we're talking about Lumberjanes. That's right, Lumberjanes. Lumberjanes? Lumberjanes! Do I like this series? I love this series. I spent all evening reading through eight graphic novels just to refresh myself about the series and why I love it so much. I mean, I pretty much already knew, but... You know, a refresher isn't always a bad thing. But before we get into why this is an amazing comic, why you should be reading it, why I love it so much, let's talk about something that you might have missed. Now, if you're new to the channel, haven't seen this segment before, this is something that you might not be reading or watching, that you might have overlooked, that I think you might enjoy. And I'm suggesting to you X-Men Red from Marvel. It is the third X-Men team to go by a color. There was X-Men Gold, X-Men Blue, and now there's Red. It's headed by Jean Grey. It's a pretty interesting team. I'm especially fond of the fact that Laura and Gabby are on the team, uh, X-23 and the Honey Badger specifically. Uh, that's right. After the Old Woman Logan series, uh, the Old Woman Laura series, uh, Laura's going back to being X-23 because Logan's alive, and I have feelings about that, but we're not going to get into that. So check out X-Men Red. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I think anybody could really like that comic. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're not here to talk about Marvel. We're here to talk about Lumberjanes from Boombox Studios. Psh. Once again, I've read eight graphic novels and some single issues tonight just to keep myself, you know refresh in the series, to let you guys know what I think about it, to let you know why you should be reading it. Man, these covers are so just boss and cool. Uh, but before we get into it, let's recite the Lumberjanes Oath, because the Lumberjanes are a scouting troop for, for a summer camp. It's really great. It's like Miss Pendolin something blah blah camp for hardcore lady types. Like, it used to be like an etiquette camp for girls, but now it's an etiquette camp for hardcore lady types. Anyway, the motto goes, I solemnly swear to do my best every day and in all that I do, to be brave and strong, to be interested and interesting, to be truthful and compassionate, to pay attention and to question the world around me, to think for others first. To always help and protect my friends. Then there's a line in there about God or something or whatever. And make the world a better place for Lumberjane Scouts and for everyone else. That's pretty neat. I mean, that's a motto I think that we all can get into. It's just doing our best and, you know, making the world a better place for not only your friends, but for everybody else. And that's one thing. That's really the core of the comic book in and of itself. Now, this comic has a lot to offer for Everyone, and I truly mean that. I mean, I've said that about Saga, which I still believe in, but more so I believe it about this particular comic, is that not only is it funny, not only does it have a really fun story, but it's got a lot of neat and interesting life lessons, mostly about friendship, because this book is all about, and this camp is all about, friendship to the max, which I think is super amazing. So why... Are we talking about the Lumberjanes other than the fact that it's a Boombox Studios comic? And if you've been watching this channel at all, you know that I love me some Boom Studios, some especially anything out of their Boombox productions. We're talking about the Lumberjanes because in a couple of months, next month to be exact, the 50th issue is coming out, which... I don't know if you know this about comics, but I know you can take a look at Marvel or look at DC and go, well, this comic has like 250 issues, or well, Action Comics is up to like 600. But for smaller publishers, getting up to 50 of the same comic is a huge, huge milestone. Most of Boom, and especially from the Boom Box line, is like four, five six, maybe eight issues long. Like, even Moto Crush, which we just talked about recently, has ten issues. That's it. And it's been going for about a year and a half. So, for a comic from a smaller publisher to consecutively every month have a new comic ready and raring to go for you, 
uh, that's amazing. And that's not even including, like, the specials. That's not including the crossover it had with Gotham Academy, which was also really, really cool. Like, I love it. So let's let's talk a little bit about this. Well, I mean, I have something for everyone because not only is this like a fun friend slice of life story, there's also a mystery. So if you're really into Gravity Falls, for example, um, this is totally way, 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 way up your alley, and it's great. It's about friendship. It's about girl power. It's about accepting yourself and being who you want to be. And that, I think, is super important for any story, but especially in the world of comics, especially when we have people complaining about forced diversity and other asinine complaints that people have been making recently about comics. Um, real asinine. So that's one of the reasons, or that's a lot of the reasons why I enjoy Lumberjanes, because it does have all this inclusivity within it, but we'll get more into that. Why did I start reading Lumberjanes? I started reading Lumberjanes for the reasons that I read a lot of things. Somebody suggested it to me, but more importantly, somebody I admired uh, suggested it to me. So, it was sometime last year, and as usual, I was complaining on the internet about Aftershock's altars, because, boy, boy, I've got some problems with that comic, and Magdalene Visaccio, but actually started the thread on Twitter complaining about alters because the art is just all over the place, suggested, well, you know, why don't you read something with better trans characters, or at least a better trans character, and then suggested to me a slew of things, but Lumberjane stuck out especially. Yes, there is a trans character in the comic. She's actually a main character during the comic. And the way they handle her is just... It's amazing. It just leagues better. She's trans, and you know she's trans because they mention it once, but they never make that the focus of her character. I want you to read the, this, so I won't tell you exact... Well, you know, I will tell you who it is. So let's talk about the characters, like, especially we'll start with the trans one, Joe. Joe is basically a smart, scientific type girl in the Roanoke cabin, and she's really cool. Her best friend is April, who is like a miniature, small, energetic type person, and she's super strong, like, she arm wrestles um, a living statue and snaps its arm off, which is super cool and awesome. Then you have Ripley, who is the youngest cabin member, who is also a ball of energy and kind of gets into everything and maybe sometimes causes trouble where she doesn't need to. You have Mal, who wants to be a punk rocker lady type. She's also a part of a roller derby team, and that's pretty cool too, in and of itself. Then you have Molly, who is is there. She's, she's really kind of I don't want to say she's the glue that holds the group together because they're all glue within their, like, their own certain ways, but she's there to be there. She got sent to the camp by mistake because, as mentioned, it used to be an etiquette camp for girls, but now it's a camp for hardcore lady types. And her parents sent her there to basically get fixed to not be a hardcore lady type. And so, yeah, there's that. like I'm losing my voice. And then overseeing them is their cabin mentor, Jen. Jen does not want to have anything hardly to do with the weirdness. She does, I mean, she eventually gets into their adventures and, you know, protecting them and all these, all this cool stuff. But, um, she starts out being a super, I mean, she's always a super responsible camp counselor. But she really doesn't believe them about... Okay, we kind of haven't talked about this. The woods are full of monsters and magical creatures. And like I said, April arm wrestled the living statue. There's cockatrice. There's gorgons. There's werebears and selkies and werewolves and three-eyed foxes. And it's like wolves with antlers. And it's such... 
an interesting and neat and mysterious and cool world. I really think you guys are going to like it if you just pick it up and read it. Now, that being said, it has been going on for over four years, so if you're wanting to get into this, you know, without having to track down all the single issues, right here there are eight graphic novels which will get you up to issue 32, and you can just, you can read them all. And of course, there are online platforms that allow you to read all the issues of all the comics, so definitely, without a doubt, check those out, check out those venues, and I really wish I had more, I mean, I do have plenty of time to talk about this, but, you know, I don't want to, like, bore y'all to death. I don't want to spoil everything. There are Greek gods in this thing. There are yetis and sasquatches and sea monsters and mermaids. There's just so many cool supernatural elements all mixed up within this slice of life camp story about growing and accepting yourself. Like, Molly wants to stay at the camp forever because she doesn't like her home life. Because her parents are straight, they don't want her to be her, and it's insane. Uh, it really paints that there are families that are good for you, for you, and families that aren't good for you. But you know, you have to come to terms with who you are and yourself. And so, it's just been really kind of an interesting ride in those sorts of scenarios. Uh, growth. Uh, there's a gender queer character named Barney who goes by they, them pronouns, who starts out at the boys' camp across the lake, but doesn't feel like they really fit in with the boys' camp, and becomes a lumberjane themselves, because they feel they're more like a hardcore lady type instead of a boy. Also, the boys' camp is amazing. They, like, bake cookies and, like, clean things, and they're just like, oh, it's so, like, the roles in this comic just, like, get put on their heads and spun around and it's just so amazing and I love it I love the whole thing and I could gush about this for really hours at a time and there are just so many cool things that I wish we could keep talking about but I want you to read it for yourself I want you to like get in there and read it and like love it and fall in love with all the characters the same way that I did uh, it's really good if you haven't been reading it start. If you started to read it and you fell off for whatever reason, maybe, you know, there are just a lot of issues and you weren't able to get them all, online platform. Do what you can, read it, give it the support. The 50th issue comes out next month in May and it's going to be a big one. It's a big special double issue, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me, but it's going to be really cool. So, yeah. Uh, that's it. That's me rambling for 13 minutes or so about the Lumberjanes and why you should read it. And I don't know if I convinced anybody, but I'm glad we talked about it. It's a great story with great characters. The art is a little all over the place. It's never unpleasant art. It's always pretty fun. Uh, it just has different artists uh, doing it all the time. So, you know, there's that. Other than that, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, good story. Lots of mystery, lots of supernatural elements. Uh, it's like a whole thing. And you're going to love it. Just give it a try. But that's it. That's everything. So I'm Fire Princess Lily. This is Transworld CNC. Next time we're talking about Gotham City Garage, a DC comic. I know you all have been waiting for me to talk about some DC comics. And then we'll see what we talk about after that. But until then, love comics, love cartoons, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.